media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. Welcome back to the show, Mike. Oh, it's great to talk with you. Mike, not a lot of attention has been paid lately to the gold-silver ratio, but... With uh, gold prices still climbing and silver still seeming to be stuck in a rut, it's perhaps becoming more important, isn't it? Yeah, uh, for sure. It, and one thing about it is in a metals bull market, gold tends to go up first, and then silver kind of lags and then starts to catch up, and then they even perform better. And silver was something that people really talked a lot about, uh, <laughs> time goes by, but nine years ago when it went to $50 an ounce. And then it had such a horrible bear market that it lagged, uh, the stock market in, in gold too for years. And you can create a ratio silver divided by gold and, and measure the performance, which one is performing better than the other. And this ratio has been declining for nine years. And then in March, when the stock market uh, declined and the S&P fell over 30%, uh, this ratio actually plunged. Um, and I believe it's made an ultimate low on that March decline because it snapped right back up. And the big cap Silver stocks, such as Pan America Silver, Wheat and Precious Metals, uh, even other ones like Hecla, uh, they have just taken off. Uh, in Wheat and Precious Metals and Pan America, they're trading at new 52-week highs, while the S&P 500 is still below its 200-day moving average, still off of its high. Uh, these mining stocks made new highs several weeks ago, uh, they're performing better than metal is. And the mining stocks tend to lead the action in the metal. So when they perform better, better, that's a bullish sign. But if they were doing the opposite, that would be bearish. So the big cap silver stocks are telling us, hey, uh, I know everyone's not really excited about silver, talking about silver, but you better pay attention and now, over the past couple of days, silver is starting to really do well um, and just take off, even do better than gold has done. This isn't to say I think people should sell gold uh, and just put everything in silver. I think it's best to own a little bit of both. But the outlook for silver now is fantastic, and I expect, look, it's nothing for silver to double uh, to go from – uh, $18 to $36 over a couple years. Uh, it's harder for the stock market to double from where it is now or even gold to double. So if I was to think about what is one thing that has the potential to go up the most from here, uh, one asset class, so to speak, I would have to pick silver. Is there a shortage of physical silver to buy right now? Well, it it is... If you go to dealers, uh, you mean, for instance, where I live, um, there's a few, let's say, uh, gold silver dealers within an hour radius. And if you go, uh, <laughs> you're lucky if they have anything. And then if they do have something, typically the price is going to be a little bit higher than what you see on Kitco or in the futures market. So I would certainly suggest that there is. And, you know, if you're lucky enough to walk into one of these stores and see it, just buy it up <laughs> while you can. Well, also on TV, I'm seeing ads for 
Two dollar silver coins for nineteen ninety five each, plus shipping and handling. Another five bucks on top of that. Are people that desperate to get silver? They're going to pay that kind of premium for it. Well, that, I, that's going a little too crazy. I, I wouldn't do that uh, myself. Uh, I mean, that's wildly overpaying. Uh, one problem, though, in the in the coin market is there's companies out there that will sell coins at really sky-high prices with the argument that, hey, these are collectibles or some sort of rare issue. It's a 1920 silver this and that, and so therefore it's worth more. And honestly, I've never gotten into that type of coin collecting. Um, I just stick to buying physical bullion or silver eagles or gold eagles and, and those type of things. I don't try to get into collectibles because it's just another, makes it more complicated and, and something else that you got to figure out. And it's just simple enough to, to buy the bullion or, you know, or, or if you got a brokerage account, just buy the exchange traded funds. And, um, you know, the central fund of Canada, symbol CEF, uh, I own a little bit of that. Um, it owns both physical gold and silver. So it's a very simple solution for a brokerage account. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, are fiat currencies uh, so unstable right now that you need gold and silver just in case the day happens uh, a year or 10 down the road that our paper money isn't worth the paper it's printed on? Well, I I think that's a serious, uh, going to be a serious problem. I mean, right now it isn't uh, (laughs) because we're in a they don't want to call it a depression but today or yesterday the CBO the Congressional Budget Office for the United States they projected that the GDP is going to contract by 30%. They don't want to call that a depression but it's you know the worst contraction since the Great Depression. They've also projected that the budget deficit is going to be close to 2 trillion dollars just this year alone, and, you know, what we saw in March was the Federal Reserve lower interest rates to zero and engage in what they say is the start of unlimited uh, quantitative easing, bond-buying operations. So we are in unprecedented times. All these measures, I believe, would normally be inflationary. They would normally would weaken the currency. So, for example... If you think of a country like Argentina, uh, like three times in the past 20 years, has had big currency devaluations. Uh, Russia did it twice since 2008. Turkey did it just uh, two years ago. Um, and when countries run a debt to GDP close to 200%, typically what happens, and we're heading in that direction, but uh, because of what's happening in the economy, there's a complete demand collapse uh, it, that's creating a massive deflationary forces. So, for example, uh, perhaps the easiest example, the best example, is the price of oil. A collapse last month it even got to a negative value for a few days in the futures market, but gasoline prices have dropped, and there is a 30% decline in the number of miles that people are driving 
now from when they were driving in February. Um, and even with the economy opening back up, so to speak, or starting to, the, this demand is not going to be back to what it was. Uh, it's just not. I mean, there's been a lot of hype, I, I think, over the idea that we're going to open up and everything's going to get back to normal. Well, look at the airline industry as one example where that's not going to happen. Uh, you're just not going to be flying the way you were before, and the airline industry itself isn't projecting a bottom in its industry for two to three years from now. So, so that's just one example. Of, yeah, Walmart, you know, boomed in their recent earnings report, but so many businesses that were shut and now are just starting to open back up are not going to see the type of demand they had before. The point is that there's the demand collapse on the consumption side in the economy. I don't think this is a permanent situation. I don't think it's ending now. My guess is there'll be a true turnaround next year. There's a lot of talk of a W-type uh, bottom in the economy where, let's say, starting from now to perhaps Labor Day, there is a bounce, you know, as things open back up. But then, you know, it's sort of like a double-dip recession and then you come out of that next year with real sustainable growth, so a W, let's say, and it's my belief that until we turn around and you get that, you know, up, final upswing of sustainability in the economy probably next year, uh, that's when we'll start to see inflation pick up. Um, and I believe that's when we'll start to see the dollar weaken and gold and silver and other precious metals really become a necessary investments um, for a lot of people. I actually think they are already because of what's happening in the bond market. Uh, if you buy a 10-year treasury bond, you don't even make 0.8%, and you got to hold it for 10 years. You make absolutely nothing. The value or the interest in CDs that you now buy has completely collapsed. I can't get uh, a one-year CD that pays less than half a percent. And this is making it so that the investment value of bonds is practically nothing. And it's important for people to be able to diversify uh, outside the stock market. You just don't want to have 100% of your money in the S&P 500 or some other stock market funds or Canadian funds or whatever it is, you just don't want to do that. That's just investing 101. And historically, the bond market has served as a perfect vehicle for diversification because when the stock market would decline, bonds would go up uh, and you'd get that interest. But now, with rates uh, so low, uh, they really can't use go meaningfully lower than here and bonds go up when rates go down there's just no it's just like almost throwing your money away uh to buy these bonds over you know a couple years uh holding period uh and therefore people need an alternative to the bond market to park their money for diversification gold serves as that alternative that's why so many of these hedge fund guys and institutional investors have been talking really now for a year, warning basically that this would time would come when you need to own it for these reasons. Uh, people uh, like Ray Dalio, uh, for example, to name just one person, uh, you know, I think this is the real reason gold is going up now, not because inflation is exploding, but because so many big investors are saying to themselves, hey, I can't put all my money in bonds for diversification anymore. I don't want to put all my money in the stock market. i got to put it some in gold and silver. So it's real investment demand, and um, I think that's something people really need to think about. I mean, I know a lot of times when we talk, I talk about the stock market and, you know, risks in the stock market and, uh, and so forth, but really uh, it's the bond market at this point, that perhaps is more risky uh, and certainly doesn't have hardly any upside to it. So I think this is a time for investors to analyze their investment holdings, and if they have 
a lot of their money in bonds, perhaps that's what to sell to move into gold and silver. But certainly they need to sell something and move it into gold and silver. Uh, gold is trading at a, you know, just recently hit a new 52 week high. Uh, silver is now starting to perform better than gold. The mining stocks are hitting new highs. Stocks like Newmont, you know, and they pay good dividends. They're not cutting their dividends, uh, whereas so many other companies are cutting their dividends or making them zero. Disney announced uh, a few weeks ago no dividend payments because no one's going to the ball, to the uh, theme parks. Well, Newmont is boosting its dividend because higher pri- gold prices mean more profits. So it's just really a perfect sweet spot for mining stocks, gold and silver, and I just you know, try and try and try to tell these American investors, uh, and I know people listen to your show are more sophisticated and, and so are people in Canada about these things, but so many Americans have nothing in gold, silver, mining stocks, absolutely nothing, and they need to get in. It's, it's not simply about protecting yourself from inflation, uh, but beating the market. These things are beating the market, and you just got to, Figure out what what can I sell to get involved in this, and and I and if you got all your money in bonds or half of it, that and you're afraid to sell stocks because you think you might miss out on a rally, then sell some of the bonds, but sell something to get into gold and silver and mining stocks. Something got to do it. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, I know you like to uh, look further afield than just the U.S. and Canada when it comes to investing. Anything internationally that's caught your eye? Well, I'm frankly being very patient um i i believe the stock market is at high risk or in the global markets of having another pullback before the end of the year probably in the fall i don't really anticipate much happening over the summer but certainly in the fall i think we're going to see another decline and what i want to do is use that as an entry point and I'm looking at, you know, markets such as Russia, Turkey, uh, those two in particular, because they have a cheap valuation compared to other global markets. They're the cheapest in the world at this point, uh, unless you talk about Greece, but they're bigger than Greece. Uh, <laughs> and some Asian markets are interesting to me, such as Vietnam, but you know, these markets, I think, will pull back too. So I'm just being very patient. Uh, but I am interested in, in, in those in particular. Both of them, in particular Russia, is also linked to the energy market, of course. Uh, there's many energy stocks that make up the Russian stock market. And we likely have seen some sort of bottom in oil, although I'm not really bullish on it. I think it's going to take much, a lot of time before oil goes into a new bull market, but um, it's probably sort of like where gold was in 2016. You know, gold made a giant bottom, and so did the mining stocks. They then had big rallies and retests of the low and for two years, basically. Uh, so I think that's where oil is headed. But I do think you know if there is a decline in the in the markets, uh, oil stocks could be an interesting time to do some investing and accumulation uh, along with Russia, Russia, Turkey, stocks in those countries. So there's, ironically, I do think there are going to be great things to buy. Uh, but I think we got to be patient 
uh, and not do it when the stock market has rallied back up to its 200-day moving average, but wait <laughs> for when there's a decline. You want to buy during declines and dips uh, for the most part, especially when you're in a more risky market. Uh, the volatility that we see day by day is not a sign of a healthy stock market, but a sign of a, a risky, more bearish market. And really, your real life tells you that. You know, everything is shut down. People are scared about the virus. And those fears aren't going away uh, next week, uh, next month. They're going to probably be here until next year. Uh, at some, you know, they're going to go away at some point, but it ain't happening uh, after this weekend. Mike, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks. Talk, great talking with you. My guest has been Mike Swanson, editor of WallStreetWindow.com. If you have any questions for Mike or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.